warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Today, my guest is at the forefront of a movement of uh, tackling the underlying issues of bullying. When I say bully, you know, it, it's, it's said so much now, it, it kind of loses meaning to a certain point, but it really is something that goes far beyond, you know, pushing, calling names, that kind of thing. It's something that is having a, a lifelong effect on the people that are involved. And today, my guest is someone who is able to help people that are, are affected by this to uh, not just become better people themselves, but also to help the people around them become better people. So with that, I would like to welcome to Influencers Radio, Mr. Alex Cheng Ho. He is the creator of the Bully Proof uh, book series, Bully Proof, Unleash the Hero Inside Your uh, Kid. And it is really turning into a, um, a phenomenal resource for a lot of uh, families and a lot of kids out there. So, Alex, please welcome to uh, Influencers Radio. Glad to have you. I'm so glad to be here, Jack. Thank you. Well, let's jump right into this. Um when we think about bullying, especially uh, as an adult, sometimes adults, unless it's something your child comes to you with, if you think back when you're kids, ah, kids call people names, they, they'll push them around, they'll, you know, it's just kids being kids, but it's, it's clearly gone so much deeper. And I think with the social media and things like that today, um, it can, you know, have, have much deeper effects. So let's start off by defining bully proof and, and this, the issues that you're dealing with. Bullying is, is in fact, it's almost become a science now that they have official definitions, but there's two keys. Um, number one is going to be intent. So kids being kids, sometimes kids will pick on other kids trying to be funny or whatnot, but bullying is when someone is intending to be malicious to another person. That's the first requirement for, for true bullying. The second is going to be duration. It's going to be, it's not just an isolated instant. You know, someone can be, uh, you know, mean to someone else. Someone can be um, quite rude, but it's the duration that creates it to be bullying. So those two things, one is going to be someone is intending to be malicious and someone's also doing it over time. Now, it doesn't have to be the same person. And that's going to be the key. If I were a bully and I were, you know, picking on Johnny today and Sally tomorrow and Jimmy the next day, and I was meaning to be malicious and I was doing it over time, it was a pattern, that's where it becomes bullying. So it doesn't have to be just one target. It can be, mul it can be multiple targets. So if you're a parent now and you have a kid that has come to you and you realize how it's affecting them, then it goes well beyond kids being kids, it becomes a, a huge, uh, focus on your life, on your, on your mental, on your physical and, uh, emotional. Well, this is absolutely uh, true. It's absolutely. In fact, here's the thing. Bullying isn't the problem. It's the negative effects of bullying. That's the problem. It's the way that it affects our lives. For example, every day, in America, 16,000 kids miss school because of bullying. That's where a problem is, that they're afraid to go to school. They don't want to be there. Um, you know, they're, they're saying that one in 10 kids are a target of bullying in every, every, every classroom. So, like, uh, at least here in North Carolina where I live, when there's 20, maybe up to 30 kids, let's call it 25 kids in a class, that means, like, two or three kids are being bullied every single day that's where the problem is bullying itself okay whatever um and and i i come from a you know a certain point of view that i don't believe bullying is a problem at all it's what's going on with it that affects somebody's lives uh i you know 
depending on what kind of faith you are or whatever, or just talk about Bible stories, uh, the first bully out there, his name was Cain, and he was bullying his brother Abel, and we, we've heard the story about what happened with that. It's been happening forever. It's part of society, but the difference is how is it affecting kids, and particularly now, like the, with the social media that you mentioned um, just a few minutes ago. What is happening that's so different now that people are committing suicide because they're being bullied. When we were kids, Jack, you kind of dealt with it. I mean, it felt bad, but there was there's something different happening now that the bullying is still the same, and maybe the way that bullying is happening is a little bit different, but if we can focus on what the effects are on our kids and how do we how do we prevent those, that's going to make a huge difference in our society and how people grow up. It is. And one of the things that I, I want to talk about, and I think, um, you know, one, you are out there not just, you know, making people aware that bullying is, is happening. I think people are aware. You know, it's 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 almost in our news uh, feeds. It's on TV every single day. Bullying is an issue. It's a it's a it's a, a big issue. And it's more than just kids not, you know, back in when I was a kid is, you know, hey, you know, toughen up and take it or, or fight back. Right. Um but one of the issues that a lot of people don't think about, and maybe you have some data on this, is how many people out there, if one in, you said one in 10 kids are out there being bullied, how many people would identify themselves as, hey, I'm a bully? You know, that's a really great question because I think most people don't. They don't even think about that. And the question is, why do people, why do people bully? You know, they've, they've done a bunch of studies. Some people will say, oh, it's, you know, it's people with low self-esteem. Um, but then other studies show it's the exact opposite. Um, if we look at, you know, psychology and especially look at, you know, for example, Tony Robbins teaches about six human need psychology. The reason why we do anything is because it meets a need, whether it's going to be of significance, of certainty, of, of connection, of whatever it may be. And some people will actually, you know, Will that identify as a bully? Probably not in the moment, but I know people who have. Um, one of the people who who's a part of our movement who actually wrote a book chapter and won the Bullyproof Books realized looking back, wow, <laughs> he's 25 years old now. Wow, I was a bully. I might not have known what I was doing back then. I might not have... Uh, um, you know, I said, yes, I'm a bully, but he recognizes now he did. He, he was trying to be mean to people and he did it over time. But that would be a great to, to see how many people um, identify themselves as the bully. Um, I think a lot of people may actually be in denial if they are. Well, I think I think you're you're right. I think that story illustrates probably um, what happens more commonly is people reflect back and realize and it hits them like, oh, wow, I was guilty of this. I, I did this to, to, to other people. And the reason I brought that up is that you come from a martial arts background, right? Yes. A lot of people think with martial arts that, oh, it's you go there and you teach, uh, you know, especially kids, I'm going to teach kids how to defend themselves. I'm going to teach them how to punch and kick and uh, be able to, to fight. And I quickly learned that that's a small part of martial arts, probably the minority part of it, that a big part of the, the philosophy of it is on the confidence, the respect, uh, self-discipline, I guess, would be a big part of it. Is that a lot of what the Bullyproof Movement is about, is to work on them with the, the mental side of this uh, much more than, hey, let me teach you how to, to block a kick and, and throw a punch? A hundred percent. I mean, I let me take that back. 95%. <laughs> I think that the fact that you know how to defend yourself helps in that area to, to feel more confident. Um, you know, they, they have a saying in martial arts, the reason why we learn how to fight is so that we never have to. I mean, you hear that thrown around a lot in movies and things like that. But it, it comes from a sense of self-confidence that people um, – feel better. And this is where I really, I guess, divert away from some of the programs that are currently in, in schools and whatnot, which focus on ending bullying. I don't believe bullying will, will really end. I mean, like I said, it started with Cain and Abel. 
I think it's part of human nature, but it's the effect of bullying that's the problem. If you tried, if, if a bully tries to bully a really confident person, it's not going to work. It's not going to work that well. I mean, okay, let's, let's take this very timely um, example. Donald Trump seems to me like a very confident person, and if someone tried to bully him, uh, it probably wouldn't work. In fact, and arguably, he might be the bully in there. But you you can't affect it. It's it's like um, a, a gnat trying to uh, bite a rhinoceros, and it just doesn't affect them that much. When we are able to take our kids and help them become more confident and more respectful and more disciplined, then things will just like all that bullying, all the teasing or whatever, it's not going to affect them that much. And I, that's what I really wanted to put a spotlight on was the fact that, that bully proof isn't about teaching kids how to defend themselves. It's no. about helping them become a person that is less uh not an easy target i guess for bullying that's a perfect name for it they're not an easy target you know i know a lot of the the people that you have uh contribute to your book uh have martial arts background but really have a lot of background in working that's with right. kids in in situations when when they're out teaching this and educating around this there's bound to be a group of kids there that either may be bullies themselves or potential bullies. I think you're probably educating people not just on defending themselves or not being targets for bullies, but you're probably also educating people even uncon- uh, or subconsciously, rather, not to be bullies when they see the effects that they could actually have on people. Do you, do you see that as being a, a high probability? Well, absolutely, because when, when someone is, is more confident and they're sure of themselves, I mean, even when you look at the studies that say, oh, you know, popular kids trying to go up the social ladder, uh, oftentimes are bullies. Well, it's because there's something missing there because they feel like they need to be more (laughs) further up the social ladder versus someone who honestly is so confident they don't really care that much. And by by educating kids, um, and and I choose to work with, with with kids because that's where a lot of the foundation of people's lives. Um, moving forward is going to start. I mean, if they were bullied as a kid, there's that that's going to shape their life. It's I know it shaped my life. If they um, if they were a bully, you know there there are studies that show that there's a 66 percent chance that if your kid was a bully in school, that they're still going to be bu- showing those bullying behaviors as an adult in the workplace. Yeah, I mean, they, they're they're now um, studies that are showing uh, that are talking about adult bullying, bullying the workplace and what's going on. And it definitely does exist. It's, it didn't start when they were 25. It started when they were 12. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you talk about that confidence that you, you brought up the studies that show that a lot of the, the source of bullying is that lack of confidence. And it, I guess they're just exhibiting that in a different way. Right. And I think one of the unique positions that you have is what you brought up is that you're not going to eliminate bullying. It's not going to go away. So I guess, do you find that once you accept that, uh, that then you can focus in on the real problem of let's, let's learn how to, to deal with it, uh, live with it or, 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 you know, mitigate its consequences in society with, uh, with some of the principles that you use? Right. So when I say, and I don't want to be like a, a naysayer or, or, or doom and gloom, I don't believe it's ever going to completely go away because it's part of human nature and it's part of society. But it can be reduced definitely because when people become more confident and we focus on – and I guess there's two, there's two schools of thought, and I see this a lot with school programs. Many school programs I see are going to focus on – reporting bullying being good to a friend don't be a bully and i think those are important and those are going to be great in there they also leave out the individual let's help the individual be stronger let's help the individual be more confident so that when if and when bullying does happen to them it doesn't affect them in a negative way and if a bully has no one, it doesn't get the, uh, you know, the question is, why does a bully bully? They want to get some emotional charge. They want to get some energy out of it. They want, they're, they're meeting one of their, their needs of significance or something like that. If they're not getting that, 
in that way, they will not use that vehicle as much anymore. They'll need to meet their needs in a different way. So while many schools will focus on, hey, let's let's bring up awareness about bullying and let's not be a bully, I think those are good. What about the other side of it of let's help your kid be bully proof so that if and when it happens, then they're going to be strong. Um, and again, coming from my martial arts background, that's how I did it. And that's how I see a lot of people do it. But here's what's interesting too here, Jack, self-defense and stuff like that. Yeah, it's important, but it can happen other ways too. I was just reading an article the other day about a, a little girl. She's probably about, I think she was nine or 10 when this started and she's now 11. Um, she was being bullied at school, but it wasn't affecting her as much because she put so much of her effort and energy into building this business called Gabrielle's Pastries. Nine-year-old entrepreneur put her heart and her soul and felt so much confidence and juice from building a pastry business. She didn't learn how to defend herself. She didn't learn how to punch and kick. But she was getting those outside effects, like martial arts has, the confidence, the discipline of having to work at something, the growth, the respect for herself and for other people that she, that she works with as clients or as customers. That was her outlet. I see people who have never done martial arts before be some of the most confident and bullyproof people because they played football. Now, is it football in itself that makes them uh, bullyproof? Uh, I would argue no, because I also have met people who played football that were bullies. It's not the activity itself, but what is the surrounding influence? I know some really, really great football coaches that taught respect and they taught discipline to their players and their players became some of the most upstanding citizens I've ever met. Yeah. And I think, you know, you bring up a good point and I think that that's probably one of the, um, the, the, the core foundations of a lot of things when you think about military, you know, basic training, you know, so many people think about, oh, it's a think about all the all the the, the grueling, uh, you know, work that goes into it, the physical part. But I think, you know, obviously the the the, the long lasting benefits of that is the mental toughness that comes yes. along with that. And you're right. The, the confidence and the, the respect and understanding teamwork that comes from playing high school sports probably far outlast and has a longer lasting effect on a person's life than the actual physical maneuvers and mechanics that they learned in that sport. 100%. So, um, so clearly you've identified that, 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 that even bullyproof isn't about learning how to fight because there's a lot of these principles will take care of 80, 90% of it, even if they never learn how to fight. So let's jump to, um, what you said, teaching kids how to be bully, uh, proof, which I guess brings us to your book series, yeah. bully proof, which I think is a, just a, a tremendous resource because one, it's not, uh, as much as, as, as you understand uh, bullying and, and what's happening, you, you've, you, you're bringing together people with a lot of different backgrounds that are dealing with kids and specifically around the challenges around bullying to share their experience and share their uh, uh, expertise and knowledge around this. What is it that um, led you to do this uh, whole bully proof uh, book series? Well, I guess I should start at the very beginning when I was bullied as a kid. You know, I, I'm an Asian guy. Um, I grew up in Kansas, and there were like four Asian people in the entire school. Um, so I was, I was a little bit different. But the funny thing was, at that younger age, it wasn't that big of a deal. But when I moved to North Carolina, that's when it really started to hit me. I was a little older, maybe nine or ten years old, and I was bullied every single day from the time that I was um, – nine years old until um, I ended up moving again. So probably till I, I was about 12 and it was because I was different as because, and, and I didn't, I wasn't involved in sports. I didn't have some activity that I was doing that I was pushing myself. I mean, I played video games. But I think Super Mario, you can only get so confident in that. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't necessarily give the same <laughs> discipline and respect and confidence as other things that you do. And, um, my father had wanted me to do martial arts for from the time I was in the first grade, and I was never interested. But um, after seeing how I was growing up, he said, you know what? 
it's time you did something. So he actually signed me up and forced me to take that first class. And um, at first I didn't want to do it, but after taking a class and I'm learning that I, I could be good at something, um, I actually quite enjoyed it and actually earned my black belt in, in Taekwondo. Um, and at the time I was just like, focusing on the karate part of it and the, you know I went to a couple tournaments which was really cool but I didn't realize that I was becoming more confident now it didn't happen all at once it took time and so that was when it there was something that really struck me looking back when you know just the past few years looking back I realized that it was a it was a program that didn't change my life overnight it took time and the the changes were lasting. So let's fast forward to now and we're seeing all kinds of bully bully prevention programs, anti-bully programs, things like that. And I realized that, you know, there's a lot of people that are teaching martial arts that could really help with this issue. But they were going about it in an interesting way. In fact, I, we were going about it. Well, I, I ran a martial arts school and we were going about it in a way that we wanted to, you know, help kids, but we would go in as the karate instructor. And that wasn't necessarily jiving with the local schools because they were worried kids were going to fight. They were worried that they were going to use the moves and they just didn't want to have any part of that. And I thought to myself, there's, there's so many good benefits from martial arts training that these kids could be getting if we were able to do that, how can we separate out the, the, the fighting part? How can we separate out the punching and kicking part, which again are going to be a way to, to get to more confident kids, but it's not the only way. So I conceived this, this, this program originally that we were just going to talk about how to stand taller and how to look people in the eye and how to be respectful, which are all parts of martial arts. And I put that together, but it, it just wasn't quite enough. And then I thought, you know what? If someone's been teaching martial arts for a long time, if they're really good, if they've been transforming people's lives, kids' lives, then they've got some authority in this area. They, they're, they're, they're the real deal. And how can we put them in a way that we can get into schools? And so we said, well, let's, let's write a book about it so that we can share with even more people. So someone could read their book and hear their story and know what they went through and relate with that and say, you know what? We would love for you to come in or for, for someone to be able to look at a book and hear different voices talking about this issue, which is, <laughs> which affects many, many people, but in different ways. Um, some of the different people that have been a part of, um, the bully proof book, they were, they were like me, they were bullied because of their race. Um, some of them might've been bullied because they were smaller. One of them was bullied because they didn't have that much money and they, um, had to, you know, their, their parents were making their clothes for them. They got bullied that way. And one of them, you know, some of them, they were bullied. This guy was bullied because he was the big kid, not the scrawny kid. He was the biggest kid in class and people bullied him. And so for people to understand that this is a issue that deals with, you know, all walks of life, that people may be bullied for any reason and to have, you know, schools, organizations, churches, people just realize, you know what, there's a solution to this. There's a solution to this. And we've, although most of them right now are martial arts instructors, um, we've had people, um, we've had a chiropractor who gave his, um, his expertise in there because a lot of people are bullied because they're overweight. Um, we've had one uh, coach named Vinu who was, um, she, she dealt with bullying until the age of 32. She was suicidal. She shares her experience and how, how she's helped people. So this is something that affects so many people. And I just thought being able to compile these into a work that people can share what they've been through as well as how they can help people and realize there is a solution out there that it's not just about, hey, we have to wait for the local school to stop bullying or we got to wait for our town to stop bullying for us not to be bullied anymore. No, that they're, they can put it in their own hands and they can help their own kid become bullyproof. And I think that's one of the things, you know, that 
is uh, so important. The fact that that the people that are helping, the people that are contributing to this bullyproof movement and contributing to your books, besides telling them here here's strategy A, B, C, you know, for for becoming bullyproof, they're letting these kids know something I think is probably far more important than that's that <clears throat> they're not alone. That's right. And what they uh, have been through. That's right. And that there is a solution to this. Um, so you put this together, and w- so what was the response to the first uh, to the first book that you put out? Um, it was amazing. The in in that particular book, um, we had twelve different authors in there. Some of them worked together. Some of them, um, so they 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 co wrote a chapter, and the number of people that were affected by this. I mean, they were, they were so happy and they were number one, the authors are magnificent and, um, them just being able to share what their expertise and how they help people. They were able to help even more people. In fact, some people even rose their hand and said uh, to one of to one of the authors said, Hey, can you, you just, you just wrote this, this chapter in this book, you know, my kid is being bullied now. And this, this was actually a past client of, of theirs. My kid is now being bullied. Can you help him? So now this particular person was able to help a past client out again because now they're talking. They, they share their story, and they're able to share, here's how I help folks. Um, the, the book has just been um, been huge for local um, communities. There was up in Rome, New York, there was a uh, – an anti-bully or a bully awareness, like school-wide district, district-wide um, week where people were talking about it and um, had me come up and um, and another one of the authors so that they could share exactly what's going on with bullying and how it can be prevented by becoming more, um, more, more confident. I mean, it's just neat to see how the authors are able to go into their local communities and have a real change. Some some folks are, are, are trying to vie for legislature changes, law changes, system-wide changes, and I think it's really great. The one consequence of that is it takes a lot of time. Um, here in North Carolina, there was a law again. There was one law against um, cyberbullying that was actually pulled because of of a, a problem with the semantics. It made it a little bit too broad. And so, when we have to deal with things like that on a system wide level, which a lot of people try to do, we're not in complete control of over that. But when we're able to educate, and each one of these authors is going out there in their communities, letting people know, yes, you can. The subtitle of the book is "Unleash the Hero Inside Your Kid." Yes, there's a hero inside your kid who's super confident, and we can bring that out, and we don't need to depend on the government. We don't need to depend on on the schools. We can do that together. And letting people know that it's possible, and again, should the schools do something? Yeah. Should the government do something? Yeah. But we don't have to wait. We can start working with kids now to help them become more confident, more disciplined, more respectful, and help them become great citizens who, in the future, aren't going to bully. But right now, when they are bullied, they're not going to be the kind of kids that's going to, um, you know, ha- have as tough a, of a time. Is it still going to be tough? Yeah, bullying's tough. It is tough. I've been through it. So many people have been through it. But just seeing how these authors have been able to get out there and engage their communities, work with mayors of towns and, and school administrators and counselors and getting so many people involved with it makes a big difference for these, these communities. Well, I think the big difference starts with what you're doing because, you know, you could have gone out and said, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm Alex Chang Ho and here's, my take and my solutions on on bullying, but the fact that you've gone out and been able to amplify this message by bringing together the people that you've brought together, because you you've uh, where are you on the series? You have like five books in the series. That's there, right. right. Yes, I mean that's five books of people. And just like you said, when when someone reaches out to one of these um, authors, these contributors, to say. You know, you know, your chapter meant something. I think that's why 
these books are probably so powerful is that there, you, you brought together five books worth of, of, um, you know, multiple authors who each one of them have an opportunity for a kid out there to feel like they're speaking directly to them. Yes. You know, the, the, because they, they, their, their story resonates, uh, with that kid. And, and, you know, like we talked about, I think that's probably one of the biggest, um, you know, the pre- biggest predictors for them, you know, being able to buy into, you know, this doesn't have to affect me the way it does is for them to find someone that they can identify with. And, and you're doing this in such a huge magnitude, being able to bring all these people together to tell their stories and also to provide um, those solutions. Where do you see this going? Well, uh, honestly, I've it's, it's and, and thank you so much. And, and the impact that, that the authors have been able to make has been huge. And um, it's it's been, in retrospect, not anywhere near what it could have been. And, and here's why. It's because of, of my own um, realizations or lack of realizations at the time. And I, I worked mainly with martial arts schools. And why? Because it was so close to me. It was so, you know, it's, it's something that I believe in 100%. And then I read articles like The Little Girl Gabrielle. And then I realized that you know what? The football coach can do this too. Why are we limiting this book to just people who do, you know, mostly people who do, who do martial arts. So the, the direction that the bullyproof movement is going is pretty much who is out there. Who's helping empower kids in this way? Is it a football coach? Is it an art school teacher? Is it a yoga instructor? Is it a tumbling coach? Who's out there helping kids become stronger, become fitter, become more confident? And these are the people that are influencers that are helping transform kids' lives now. And how can we amplify that in their own circles of influence? as a teacher, as a, um, as, as a coach, as an instructor, whoever it is, because those are the folks that are out there. When I ran a martial arts school, I could help about 150 kids. And that was kind of my max. I could change 150 lives. By doing this, although I, I don't get the, you know, the personal satisfaction of directly helping them, if if we each each one of these authors currently they're they're just under sixty authors I think it's like fifty eight and if each of them is influencing a hundred fifty kids under their direct supervision um, or even more because some of them like they might be a, a school teacher and helping hundreds of kids or a counselor that's awesome the bullyproof movement is going to spread even wider and help more kids become more confident and unleash those heroes inside of them. That's where I see this moving. And, um, with, with the next book, it's, it's going to be offered to, you know, if anyone wants to be a part of that, then it's, it's going to be offered in, in many different, um, I guess niches or many different, um, areas of influence, you know, um, I'll, I'm going to put this out there right now. Uh, right now, I'm speaking. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. To, I'm in negotiations and trying to get in contact with uh, a local mayor who has a local bullying um, initiative of the town of Holly Springs. Who well, I'd love to be a part of this book because I know by being a part of this, his own movement um, in his town is going to be made even stronger. Well, I know that you, your commitment, um, and hopefully uh, I can reveal this, that you, you're coming up, uh, not just the books, but you are going to be starting a um, Bullyproof Radio coming up right. to, to, to get this out there and, and get the stories of these folks out here. So you're, you're really, um, the momentum you have is, is, is tremendous. To have all of these books, all five of these books so far um, hit, the, the Amazon bestseller list. Uh. I I am so grateful that they have. In fact, um, in some some cases they've been international too because we have um, we have international authors as well. Um, we've had some from India. We had some from the UK, and it's it's really neat to see how this is not just um, going to be in the United States, where you know. The nonprofit organization I have is called Bullyproof America, 
but it's not just here. Um, I, I got the chance to speak with a gentleman um, who's actually in India, um, and, and they call it, they don't call it bullying, they call it ragging. But it's the same thing, and you, you can actually, if you ever read news reports, um, oftentimes it may be even more violent over there. But to see someone like him being able to go out there and help people and educate them and, and encourage them to be more strong so they're not going to be uh, the, the targets of this kind of uh, this ragging or this bullying <laughs> – I've never even been to India, man. But <laughs> to to know that by by being affiliated with this gentleman and knowing that he's helping people, it, it warms my heart. Well, I you know that's the one thing that you you've you've clearly touched a lot of lives, and and the fact that I don't think there's a person listening to this that if they stopped and think, you know, they they either they've been affected in their lives. Uh, either one, they were bullied, or two, they may have just come to the realization that maybe they were a bully themselves. How can people find out more to get the hold of the Bully Proof books? What's the best way for them to uh, to get a copy of the books? Well, the cool thing is this. If you just go on Amazon.com and you type in Bully Proof, um, you're going to see a few of them on there. Um, and it's one word, so B-U-L-L-Y-P-R-O-O-F. Um, and if you just type that in, you will see a number of them up there. Um, there's, there's a couple of other people that use that term too. And I think they've got some pretty cool stuff out there too, but, um, there's actually the five volumes. I can see them right here. Um, they're all different ones. Um, so that's the easiest way you can get an Amazon Kindle. You can also get in paperback, um, as well. And you also work with the uh, organizations that may want to get copies of your book as well to, to, um, hand out at their own events and things like that. Uh, is, is there a way for one, I guess, for people to, to figure out how to, you know, get copies of your book if they want to use it in their organization? And two, uh, people that are listening to this that think, you know, this is exactly what I do. Or, you know, the kids that I help, it's, it's what I have a passion for. Um, I, w- I want to become part of this. What's the best way for them to, uh, uh, to connect with you on that? The easiest way right now is Facebook. I'm on Facebook all the time, and you can reach me again. It's Alex Changho, C-H-A-N-G-H-O, and just hit me up. Um, I'm, I don't have a giant team. I read all my own messages, and if anyone's interested in being a part of this movement, we can see if it's a good fit, and uh, absolutely. If, if you want to order books, probably it's easiest to go through me instead of going through Amazon, because if uh, if you can help make one more kid bully proof and you know there's the, we we hear all the terrible stories um out there and, but you know what there's a lot of stories out there that are great where someone did decide to do something great as a result of of being becoming more confident despite all the bullying and if we can help one more kid do that it's totally worth it and these books are going to be a great help because Someone can just read it and realize, hey, I'm not the only one dealing with this. Well, I, I think, yeah, that, that, that that's what begins in, in the change and evolution of someone's circumstances and the way they feel about themselves, just knowing that that the, the, they're not alone out there. And, and you, you putting all these people out there and giving them the, uh, you know, the attention, the exposure that is going to help so many people. That's uh, definitely why I feel that you are an influencer uh, without a doubt. So we'll put that uh, information. We'll put a link to your uh, Facebook um, information up on the show post and uh, some links to your books uh, as well, because I think uh, this is just a fascinating uh, topic that, that I'm going to be following for, for quite some time. And, and, uh, it really has been a privilege to have you on Influencers Radio. And I want to thank you for coming on and sharing this today. Hey, thank you so much, Jack. All right. Fantastic folks. There you have it. Check it out. Bullyproof, uh, on Amazon. One word, bullyproof. Uh, we'll have links on the show post and definitely keep up with, uh, what Alex is, uh, doing with this movement and, uh, keep an eye out for Bullyproof Radio as well. Until next time on Influencers Radio, remember, you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today. Or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.